Hey, welcome here to Fluent Fish Adventure. I'm Denny. Today, I want to share the easiest, most economical drift sock solution that I've found. Uh, it'll take you less time to put together than you've already spent watching this video just about. Uh, I'll show you how to put it together, uh, give you a quick demonstration, and then I'll throw in a couple of rigging tips at the end. So let's break one open and take a look. The main component is a reusable bag from Menards. Uh, those cost 99 cents at the checkout counter. Um, apart from that, you're going to need a small piece of pool noodle, a small weight. I use a weight from a cast net. Um, you'll also need some zip ties and a short section of paracord. Okay, so the reason why I recommended a Menards bag and not just any old random uh, reusable store bag is because the Menards bags have these little loops uh, sewn into them. Most of the bags you get at stores, they don't have that. And these give us a nice place uh, to connect our floats and our weights to try and keep the bag open when we put it in the water. So, so that's why I recommend the Menards bag, um, not because I have any sort of lucrative Menards sponsorship. Seriously, though, if, if anybody from Menards is watching and is interested, I mean, I'm, I'm up for it. I, I shop there a lot. So I'm sure you see where this is going. We're going to attach uh, a weight to one of the loops with the zip ties. We're going to attach a float to the other loop with one of the zip ties. That way, when you put it in the water, one side's going to float, one side's going to open up so that it can collect the water and, and, and function like it's supposed to. Once you've attached the float and the weight, then all that's left is to attach a leash to the handles. I just use a short section of paracord uh, tied with loops at both ends so it's easily removable uh, and I don't have to have any extra pieces of hardware to connect it uh, to add, that are going to add weight or clang around when I'm using it. Okay, so they're cake to make, they cost almost nothing. The real question is, how well do they work? So here I am out on the water on a day when we had a pretty good breeze. Uh, I'm just floating with nothing to slow me down, and letting the wind push me around as it wants to, and you can see that it was pushing me at right about a mile an hour. So I took one of these do-it-yourself drift socks, I deployed it, threw it out, let it fill up with water, and once I stabilized, rechecked, and it had pretty much cut my speed in half, which is pretty good considering it was only one drift sock. Okay, so I do own a full-size, like, boat drift sock. Um, I take this with me on really, really windy days. If the forecast is calling for winds that are pushing 15 miles an hour, um, I'll take this because this is what I'll need. Uh, in most cases, uh, this is overkill. Uh, it's bulky, it's kind of a hassle to deploy and get back in just because it's so big. Uh, and in most cases, I don't need it. So what I normally have with me all the time is this, and this is just a, this is the three pack of the ones we're making here today. Uh, it's got a small compact footprint in the kayak. It doesn't take up much space. And it's nice being able to, you know, pick and choose to, to add or remove uh, as I need to try and dial my speed on, to dial my speed in if the wind is changing a little bit over the course of the day. Okay, so just a couple of quick tips here on just rigging these to your kayak and, and using them out on the water. Whenever I can, I like to try and drift sideways. Um, it opens up the, how, I can, how I can hook these up. I can rig one up right off my side to the anchor trolley, and then that leaves me options to hook up a second or third one um, fore and aft uh, right off of my rod holder, so I can run up to three off one side. If you're dragging baits, drifting sideways is good because it allows you to get a little wider spread um, of your, for your lines than if you've got them, if you're, if you're drifting forwards or backwards with your lines out. Um, if you're casting like to the shore, drifting sideways is just helpful because you have the full range of casting forward uh, and not having to cast sideways, you know, holding yourself all contorted the whole time you're, you're casting. And then finally, I like to keep these rigged up sort of tight to the kayak. Um, I, don't, I don't run them very far off, which is obvious by, you know, the, the short section of line that I made to hook them up with. Um, keeping them up close, tight to the kayak, uh, it makes them easier to grab and pull out of the water without having to have the retrieval leash. Um, and then also, you know, it just makes it less of a tangle hazard when you're trying to land a fish. So do yourself a favor, take a few minutes, assemble a couple of these, and add them to your toolbox. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell for more kayak fishing adventure tips and tricks. Until next time, paddle up. Let's go looking for a fight.